Welcome to today's safety engineering knowledge check. This 25 question quiz will test your expertise on critical workplace safety concepts from OSHA regulations to hazard controls and risk management. Each multiple choice question is designed to reinforce key principles you use daily as a safety professional. You'll hear the question, four options, the correct answer and a clear explanation tying back to real world applications. Ready to begin. Let's start with question one. What is the primary goal of a job safety analysis or GSA? Let's look at the options. Option A, increase productivity. Option B, identify and eliminate workplace hazards before they cause injury. Option C, reduce operational costs. Or option D, train employees on company policies. The correct answer is B, identify and eliminate workplace hazards before they cause injury. Here's why. A GSA breaks down job tasks step by step to spot potential dangers and implement controls before accidents happen. It's all about prevention. Question 2. Which OSHA standard covers hazard communication? Is it option A, 29 CFR 1910120? Option B, 29 CFR 1926101? Option C, 29 CFR 1910-147 or option D, 29 CFR 1910-134. The right answer is A, 29 CFR 1910-1200. This is OSHA's Hazard Communication Standard or HCS. It ensures chemical safety by requiring proper labels and safety data sheets. So workers know the risk of the chemicals they handle. Question 3. What does the hierarchy of controls prioritize first for hazard mitigation? Option A, PPE. Option B, administrative controls. Option C, elimination. Or option D, substitution. The best answer is C, elimination. The hierarchy ranks controls from most to least effective. Elimination, remove the hazard entirely, is at the top, followed by substitution, engineering controls, administrative controls, and finally, PPE as a last resort. Question 4. Which type of fire extinguisher is suitable for electrical fires? Option A, Class A. Option B, Class B. Option C, Class C. Or Option D, Class D. The correct choice is C, Class C. Class C extinguishers are designed for electrical fires. They use CO2 or dry chemical agents to safely put out fires involving live equipment. Remember, Class A is for ordinary combustibles. Class B for flammable liquids and Class D for metal. Question 5. What is a permissible exposure limit or PEL for noise over an 8 hour workday? Option A, 85 decibels. Option B, 90 decibels. Option C, 100 decibels. Or Option D, 115 decibels. The answer is B, 90 decibels. OSHA's PEL is 90 dB, but at 85 dB, Employers must implement a hearing conservation program to protect workers' long-term hearing. Question 6. What does LOTO stand for in workplace safety? Option A. Lockout tagout. Option B. Loss of time off. Option C. Load over timeout. Or Option D. Legal occupational training. Option. The correct answer is A. Lockout tagout. LOTO procedures. Required under OSHA's 29C FAR 1910-147. Censure dangerous machinery. Stays powered down during maintenance. Workers use physical locks and tags to prevent accidental startups that could cause serious injuries. Question 7. Which organization develops NFPA standards? Option A. NIOSH. Option B. National Fire Protection Association. Option C. OSHA. Or option D, ANSI. Best B, National Fire Protection Association. NFPA creates critical safety standards like NFPA 70E for electrical workplace safety. Remember, OSHA enforces rules, but NFPA writes many of the technical guidelines. Question 8. What's the main purpose of a near-miss report? Option A, to assign blame. Option B, to identify hazards before an accident. Option C, to track attendance. Or option D, to document equipment failures. The right answer is B, to identify hazards before an accident. Near misses are free lessons. 
They reveal risks that didn't cause harm this time but could next time. Reporting them helps prevent future incidents. Question 9. What's the minimum height for fall protection under OSHA? Option A, 4 feet, general industry or 6 feet, construction. Option B, 6 feet or 10 feet. Option C, 10 feet or 15 feet. Or option D, 15 feet, all industry. It's A, 4 feet in general industry and 6 feet in construction. OSHA's fall protection rules differ by sector. Always check 1910 and 28 for general industry or 1926, 501 for construction. Question 10. Which gases are monitored in confined space entry? Option A. Oxygen, hydrogen sulfide, carbon monoxide and combustibles. Option B. Nitrogen, helium, argon. Option C. Ozone and methane. Or option D. Radon and CO2. A is correct. O2, H2S, CO and combustibles are the big four. Low oxygen or high toxic gas levels can be deadly. Testing is required before entry. Question 11. What's the purpose of an emergency action plan? Option A. Tax compliance. Option B. Outlining procedures for fires or spills. Option C. Scheduling vacations or option D. Tracking inventory. The answer is B. An EAP 29 CFR 1910 38 ensures everyone knows evacuation routes, emergency contacts and how to respond to crises. It's not just paperwork, it saves lives. Question 12. What does MSDS stand for? Option A. Material Safety Data Sheet. Option B. Machine Safety Directive Standard. Option C. Mandatory Safety Documentation System. Or Option D. Maintenance Service Data Sheet. A is correct. Though it's now called STS. Safety Data Sheet. These documents provide pro required Azure's HASCOM standard. Question 13. What's the leading cause of construction fatalities? Option A. Electrocutions. Option B. Stuck by incidents. Option C. False. Or Option D. Caught in or between. C. False. Top OSHA's fatal four. Falls from roofs, ladders or scaffolds account for over 1 by 3 of construction deaths. That's why fall protection is non-negotiable. Question 14. What's the max forklift speed in a warehouse? Option A. 5 miles per hour. Option B. 10 miles per hour. Option C. 15 miles per hour. Or option D. No limit. OSHA recommends A. 5 miles per hour in congested areas. Faster speeds increase tip overs and collision risks. Slow down near pedestrians. Question 15. Which regulation covers respiratory protection? Option A, 29 CFR 1910 1 134. Option B, 29 CFR 1910 1 146. Option C, 29 CFR 1910 1 120. Or Option D, 29 CFR 1910 Or 1910 is the answer. This standard mandates fit testing, medical eval and proper respirator use critical for avoiding lung damage. Question 16. What's the primary purpose of a hot work permit? Option A. To authorize welding in hazardous areas. Option B. To track employee overtime. Option C. To schedule equipment maintenance. Or option D. To approve vacations. The correct answer is A. To authorize welding in hazardous areas. Hot work permits are critical for controlling fire risks during activities like welding or grinding. They ensure proper precautions are taken before sparks start flying in potentially dangerous environments. Question 17. What's the first step in risk assessment? Option A. Implement controls. Option B. Identify hazards. Option C. Train employees. Or Option D. Document findings. The answer is B. Identify hazards. You can't protect against what you don't know about. A proper risk assessment always starts with thorough hazard identification before moving on to analysis and control measures. Question 18. What does PPE stand for? Option A. Personal Protective Equipment. Option B. Professional Performance Evaluation. Option C. Plant Production Efficiency. Or Option D. Preventive Policy Enforcement. It's a PPE. Like gloves and goggles is essential. Remember, it's your last line of defense. 
the hierarchy of controls tells us to first try eliminating hazards completely before relying on PPE. Question 19. Which agency enforces workplace safety in the US? Option A. EPA. Option B. NIOSH. Option C. OSHA. Or Option D. FDA. The correct answer is C. OSHA. The Occupation Safety and Health Administration. While NIOSH researches safety issues, OSHA is the enforcement agency that can issue citations and penalties for violations. Question 20. What's the purpose of a safety audit? Option A. To evaluate compliance. Option B. To reduce wages. Option C. To increase production speed. Or Option D. To track complaints. The answer is A. To evaluate compliance with safety policies. A good safety audit isn't about finding fault. It's about identifying opportunities to make your workplace safer for everyone. Question 21. What's the minimum safe distance from power lines for cranes? Option A. 5 feet. Option B. 10 feet. Option C. 20 feet. Or option D. 50 feet. B is correct. 10 feet for lines up to 50 kV. This OSHA requirement prevents deadly electrocutions, one of constructions fatal for hazards. Always know your clearance distances. Question 22. Which hazard does ergonomics address? Option A. Chemical exposure. Option B. Musculoskeletal disorders. Option C. Electrical shocks. Or Option D. Hearing loss. The answer is B. Musculoskeletal disorders. Ergonomics helps prevent those nagging back injuries and repetitive strain injuries that develop over time from poor workstation setups. Question 23. What is the purpose of a fire prevention plan? Option A. Ensure 5 minute fire response. Option B. Identify flammables and ignition sources. Option C. Track response times. Or Option D. Assign blame. B is correct. A good fire prevention plan proactively identifies what could burn and what could start a fire, then implements controls to keep them apart, much better than reacting after the fact. Question 24. How to prevent struck by accidents? Option A. High vis clothing. Option B. Barriers and traffic controls. Option C. Avoid moving equipment. Or Option D. All of the above. The best answer is D. All of the above. Struck by incidents are among construction's deadliest hazards, requiring multiple layers of protection, including PPE, engineering controls, and safe work practices. Question 25. What's the focus of ISO 45001? Option A. Environmental management. Option B. Occupational health and safety. Option C. Food safety. Or Option D. Cyber security. The answer is B. Occupational health and safety management systems. Think of it as the international version of OSHA's framework, a systemic approach to worker safety that's recognized worldwide. And that wraps up our 25 question safety engineering challenge. Whether you're starting for certification or refreshing your knowledge, I hope this session helps sharpen your safety skills. Remember, every hazard you spot and control could save a life. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more safety content like this. Hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. Got questions or topic requests? Drop them in the comments below. Stay safe out there and I'll see you in the next video.